Alpine and McLaren appeared before the FIA's Contract Recognition Board on Monday, August 29, 2022, to claim Oscar Piastri's services. The decision is likely within a few days. However, the prospects of Piastri ever sitting in the Alpine look quite unlikely. We will be discussing this and more in today's video. Stay tuned until the end of the video to learn more. Despite the fact that Alpine was the first to sign a deal with Piastri, it appears that the French will not have him in the cockpit in 2023. According to Sky Sports, Pierre Gasly has emerged as Alpine's preferred candidate. Red Bull has already asked the Frenchman whether he may switch Alfa Tori for Alpine. That would not be an issue with the proper remuneration. Alpine is pursuing the action against McLaren and Piastri only for financial reasons. Alpine has made significant investments in talent in recent years and expects McLaren to compensate for this. The latter team must also compensate Daniel Ricciardo, whose contract has been cancelled. If Gasly departs Alfa Tori, a vacancy will be created on that team. Red Bull had already been rumoured to be interested in Colton Herter. The American is presently racing for the Andretti team in IndyCar. One issue might be that he lacks a so-called super license, which permits him to compete in Formula 1. Oscar Piastri never had an F1 contract with Alpine for 2023 and is thus free to race for McLaren next year. Alpine moved quickly to elevate current reserve driver Piastri to a racing seat next year after Fernando Alonso's 2023 move from Alpine to Aston Martin was confirmed on July 30. However, only two hours after Alpine's announcement confirming Piastri's signing, which did not include any words from Piastri himself, the Australian issued his own statement stating that he would not be driving for Alpine in 2023. Alpine sources now said that Piastri never signed a Formula 1 deal with the team for 2023. In November 2021, Piastri signed a contract with Alpine that included a provision defining the team's commitments to Piastri. These duties included handing Piastri a set number of test kilometers in an F1 car, which is more than 3,500 kilometers, as well as covering his expenses and designating him Alpine's reserve driver in 2022. If Alpine met these responsibilities, the team had the option of putting Piastri in a racing seat for 2023. This deal, however, was between Piastri and Alpine's driver academy, not the F1 team. As a result, because it was not a Formula 1 contract, it was never registered with Formula 1's contract recognition board. As a result, when McLaren filed their contract with Piastri with the CRB after signing the Australian, neither Alpine nor McLaren was notified of any dispute, though McLaren presently has Lando Norris and Daniel Ricciardo under contract for next year. Negotiations over the specifics of such a split are underway. However, it is understood that Ricciardo's team is seeking cash recompense in the region of $21 million. This implies that Alpine's sole alternative is to pursue the dispute in civil court. Alpine's parent business, Renault Group, is registered in France, while the Alpine F1 team is based in England. Therefore, it is uncertain which jurisdiction would prevail. The Alpine and McLaren teams are both vying for the Australian services in 2023. The Concord Agreement requires them to abide by the CRB's judgment and not take any additional legal action to modify that verdict. The CRB, which was formed in the aftermath of Michael Schumacher's departure from Jordan and Benetton and Roberto Marino's subsequent dismissal from the latter, normally functions quietly in the background, only making news when a high-profile conflict develops. It is mentioned in Appendix 5 of the FIA Sporting Regulations. However, that part is blank, with the comment reserved for the exclusive use of competitors entered in the FIA Formula 1 World Championship. The exact intricacies of how it works are codified in the Concord and hence are not commonly known, even within the F1 paddock. The CRB exists separately from the FIA. Its function is to notify the governing body of which team has a legitimate contract with a driver and is authorised to hold a super licence on their behalf. Its primary duty is to house all F1 race, reserve and test driver contracts, or at least the main elements. Teams are not required to submit all documentation as full contracts are extensive and involve marketing issues among other things. When a disagreement emerges, three attorneys meet to analyse the evidence presented by all sides. They must provide an outcome within three days of the hearing. If Alpine wins the CRB lawsuit, it does not guarantee that Piastri will compete for the Enstone team in 2023. Given the hostility surrounding his attempts to join McLaren, it is clear that the relationship has deteriorated to the point where forcing him to drive makes little sense for either party. In that instance, Alpine would be free to set its own price and sell him to McLaren. Alpine could in principle entertain interest from other clubs looking to hire Piastri or swap him for someone with a contract elsewhere such as Pierre Gasly. If McLaren is unable to sign Piastri either through the CRB ruling or a future agreement with Alpine, the team will have to recruit another driver to replace Daniel Ricciardo. If Alpine loses, there is a chance that legal action will be taken, though not to pursue its claim on his services. 
Otmar Safnauer, the team's manager, has stated that Alpine would consider filing a lawsuit to reclaim the money spent on his test programs and so on. When the issue is settled by a Formula One board, Alpine team principal Otmar Safnauer remains convinced that Oscar Piastri will race for his team next season. Alpine is at odds with its backup driver Piastri, who has stated that he does not want to be promoted to the Alpine position left by Fernando Alonso. Piastri has been connected with a 2023 McLaren seat. Next week, the Contract Recognition Board of Formula One will hear the case. Safnauer said, What are we doing to keep him is going to the CRB on Monday and having them decide which contract Oscar signed takes precedence. Once we have that ruling, we'll see how things go. I have heard both sides of the story and we are confident Oscar signed with us in November. Certain provisions must be included in the contract and I am convinced they are. The domino effect began in late July with the Hungarian Grand Prix. First, four-time Formula One champion Sebastian Vettel announced his retirement from the sport at the conclusion of 2022 leaving his Aston Martin seat available. The day after that race, Alonso shocked Alpine by revealing he would be joining Aston Martin the next year. Alpine had given the 41-year-old Alonso a one-year contract with a one-year extension option, but he selected Aston Martin's lengthier offer. Then, late the next day, Alpine announced that it was promoting Piastri to Alonso's seat, only for the 21-year-old Piastri to publicly deny it on Twitter. Piastri tweeted at the time, I understand that, without my permission, Alpine F1 issued a press release late this afternoon announcing that I will be driving for them next year. This is incorrect, and I have not signed a 2023 contract with Alpine. Next year, I will not be driving for Alpine. Safnauer does not view it this way. Safnauer explained, His promise to us was that if we put him in our car, he would race with us. So that is what we are pursuing. When you believe you have a valid contract with a driver and he signs something else, going to the CRB is the logical next step. If Piastri wins, Alpine will have to replace him, potentially with Daniel Ricciardo, who is leaving McLaren at the conclusion of the season. Safnauer, on the other hand, feels history may be on his side. This has happened before. I just happened to be there when Jensen Button signed for Williams. But Bar Honda rightfully exercised their option on Jensen, he explained. Jensen really wanted to go to Williams, but Bar Honda won the CRB and then had a great relationship with Jensen that culminated in a world championship in 2009. Safnauer said Piastri, whose contract runs until 2024 with an option for the conclusion of the season, sounded pleased when he was told he would be replacing Alonso. He happened to be in the simulator, so I went and found him, and he smiled and thanked me, Safnauer explained, so he rushed through the press release. Alonso was a free agent at the time of the move, which meant he could speak with Aston Martin and other teams. There was paddock rumours on Sunday that it could happen. So it is not that surprising. What surprised me was how far we got with Fernando in our negotiations, Safnauer remarked. When we got to the last hurdle, Fernando indicated that he was ready to sign. The only surprise was that it was revealed Monday morning, despite the fact that he had stated on Sunday night that there was no need to rush. Although Safnauer claimed he is not disappointed by Alonso, he had expected him to stay. When I said goodbye to Fernando on Sunday, he said, look, do not worry, we have got time. I will be on my yacht in Greece for the holidays. He invited me to join him for coffee. He said, come to my boat if you're in Greece. Safnauer added, we presented him with the contract that we were comfortable with. Despite his desire for the lengthy transaction, he indicated to me that one plus one was sufficient. McLaren team principal Andreas Seidel, who attended a press conference alongside Safnauer on Saturday, remained tight-lipped on who will replace Ricardo. I am not going to comment on any driver's names or scenarios, he explained. It is something we will address starting next week. What are your thoughts on today's video? Please let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss any of our incredible videos. Keep an eye out for the next video. Bye for now.